Okay. Welcome to uh, Faith Families uh, Wednesday night spiritual growth spiritual growth study. Um, over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about homosexuality in the Bible. Uh, is it a fact or is it fabricated hate? Um, this study actually started before we went on summer break, and uh, I'll give a little bit of review before we start in with our first uh, text that we're going to look at. Um, there are a few things that we need to um, address when we're interpreting or we're looking at um, Bible passages. In other words, things to consider when we're looking at the passage. Number one is the culture that it was written. You know, uh, if, you, if you look at our cultures, our culture today looks nothing like the culture over 2,000 years ago um, in the time of Jesus and even more, another 2,000 years in the time when the Bible, uh, the Old Testament was written. So there are different cultural norms that we had to take into consideration. Um, the second thing is the context that it was written. Um, now context means where, what was it written for? What is the story about? Um, what are some of the surrounding stories that it's addressing? Um, we'll see this, uh, especially when we get into the, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and later in the stories of um, in the New Testament. Um, so we need to really take into consideration not just the verse that we're looking at, but what are the surrounding verses? What do they look like? And then third is the audience. Who is the text directed to? What is the intent or the purpose of the of this text or this passage? What 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 is what is it what does it mean for for not only them back there, but how do we apply that to our lives in today's world? Okay, so those are three things that we need to keep in mind. Um, the seven the seven texts that are used to condemn homosexuality in the Bible. Um, I would add there uh, erroneously, um, are Genesis 9, 20 through 27. This is the story of Noah and the cursing of his son Ham. This is after the flood, and uh, Ham sees his father naked, and he is cursed by Noah. Um, Genesis 19 is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, Everybody wants to say that this story is about homosexuality and the reason why Sodom and Gomorrah was, was um, destroyed was because of their uh, sin of homosexuality. We'll see. It's not. Um, Leviticus is the holiness um, passages. The law um, on sexual relations, okay, it tells you what sexual relations and, and who um, you can have sex with and who you can't have sex with. We'll get into that when we get there. Leviticus is another one. Um, this is the one where uh, Leviticus 20 is where they talk about it is an abomination and they want to try to say that homosexuality is an abomination. But actually what it is, is this is the holiness code. It means that the people of Israel were supposed to be set aside. That's what holiness means, to be completely different, to be set aside um, for the purpose that God had them, um, which was to bring about the Christ. We'll get to that uh, in a couple weeks. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Here's a list of uh, things that um, the writer, um, Paul, presumably, uh, puts out that says these things, these acts will not get you into the kingdom of heaven. Um, the problem is um, he's talking to a specific uh, people, remember audience, and there's a lot of things that you need to know about the audience before you actually try to understand this, these verses. Uh, the next one is, is 1 Timothy. Um, this is, again, a sin list. Um, we'll get to that. And then in Romans uh, 1, 26 and 27, the penalty of unnatural relationships. That's, that's interesting because uh, it uses the same language that God used or the Bible uses when he, when God permits things to, to happen that were not permitted before. So 
those are the, those are the seven verses that we're going to be talking about. Um, today we're going to talk about Genesis 9, uh, 20 through 27. And I'll go ahead and read that real quick. Noah, a man of the soil, was the first to plant a vineyard. This is right after he came out of the flood. He had him and his sons and their children, or their wives, and so they're all sitting down to start farming. Uh, he drank some of the wine that uh, and became drunk, and he lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Jephthah took a garment and put it on their shoulders and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine, he knew what his youngest son had done to him. He said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowliest of slaves shall be to your brothers. So, what we have here is Noah plants a vineyard, he gets drunk, uh, he, he gathers the wine, he makes wine, and then he gets drunk, and he passes out in his tent. Like, like all uh, crazy things when you get drunk, you, you, for some reason he was naked. So his youngest son walks in on him, sees him there naked, and then instead of doing the right thing, which would be to cover his father up, um, keeping him from being embarrassed and shamed, he goes and tells his other brothers, probably snickering at the time, and saying, come check this out. Instead, his brothers come and they put a garment over their shoulders and walk backwards and they cover their father. Uh, Ham took to, uh, looked at Noah's nakedness. Now this is important to, to note here. Um, because a lot of times you'll hear people talk about um, to, to uncover someone's nakedness. Now, in the, in the Leviticus laws, it says a, man, or a, 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 a son shall not uncover the nakedness of his mother or of his father. And that, that's, that's a different meaning because it's to uncover. It means that you actively do something to cause, um, cause um, shame or, or um, something to the other person. Um, and then it also, it, it has an idiom, it kind of refers that there's a little bit more that goes on there. But that is something that is not seen here because it doesn't say that, that Ham uncovered, it just says Ham saw. That, that's it. And then it goes and he tells his, his, uh, his brothers. Um, some, of the, some of the other things that this, this um, has been said to, uh, to represent is, uh, is that Ham uh, had performed the homosexual act uh, on Noah because it says, when, saw, uh, when uh, Noah woke up and he knew what Ham had done. Well, you're kind of stretching it there if you're saying that, oh, he must have done something, homose some homosexual act or something. Um, because it's not saying that. It just says he saw them and he told his brother. So, moving on. The another one is that Ham had performed a sexual act on Noah's wife. Man, that's an interesting one. And this is, goes back to the Leviticus thing. You're not supposed to, um, you're not supposed to uncover um, the nakedness of your mother uh, or of your aunt or so on and so on. Well, this is saying that what had happened was that uh, Ham had walked into the tent, saw his father was passed out naked, and so he took his father's place and seduced his mother. Again, kind of a big stretch here. Um, the third, the next one is that Canaan, who was Ham's son, notice in the text it says that uh, Canaan um, was his son, and it mentions him, and then Canaan is the one that's cursed. So some people have proposed that Canaan was the one that came in and did the sexual act um, to Ham, or maybe uh, Ham's wife, the same as Noah and Noah's wife. So that's why um, 
Cana is uh, uh, cursed and not Ham. By, by, no. All of these are, are kind of looking for a meaning that's not there. I mean, it, it's, it's straightforward if you just look at it. And, and the reason why I say it's straightforward, okay, because in Genesis 2, 25, and also in 3, 7, it talks about the nakedness. Adam and Eve were naked, and when God confronted them, they told God, we were naked and were ashamed. In other words, something culturally says that nakedness is something to be ashamed of. Um, so, what we're seeing here is Ham walks in, sees his father naked, and instead of, you know, covering his shame as his brothers did, he announced his shame. And it was uh, the shamefulness to see when someone's naked, and then so Ham basically reveled in um, Noah's shame. And so that, that would be a straightforward if you read the text as it is, understanding the culture that nakedness is, is shameful and to see someone's nakedness causes shame on both people. Um, so it's like, it's kind of like, what do you say, the, the, what happens in Vegas? <laughs> kind of like you walk in on your parents and, or your, your, your parent and you go, oops, and you don't say anything about it, okay? That's it. It's, it's not, it didn't happen. Um, but instead, um, Ham goes and tells his brother, his brothers. And I'd say that that is what Noah knew what he had done. Um, kind of announced that, hey, dad got drunk and he's passed out in his tent naked again. Or passed out again, or naked. So, um, the straightforward reading is that, that um, Ham saw Noah's nakedness and um, didn't uh, do anything to cover up that shame. Instead, he delighted in it. Any questions? This, this would also fall into, like I said before, an audience that is intended for. Um, looking at the story before this passage, um, the story of God's covenant with Noah, and the reason that he uh, has rainbows would suggest that the section is explaining why things are the way they are. Okay, so what are we trying to explain here? Well, what is the curse? He, curse on Cain is he is marked. And this is a bad thing, because this is why people believe that um, there are uh, uh, pigmented people, and then there are pigmented uh, challenged people like myself, who I am very pigmentedly challenged. In other words, uh, it's trying to say why we have black and brown and white people. And this is trying to suggest that the reason why we have black people is because they are from the descendants of Ham and Cain, and um, the curse is their, the color of their skin. I don't believe that, um, just as much as I don't believe that God set a rainbow to let us know that he's never going to flood the earth again. It's just kind of one of those things that um, the Bible tries to explain um, that's that's unexplainable at the time. So, um, okay. Once again, um, talk about the, the the covering of the nakedness. Once again, the audience would understand the uncover of the nakedness versus to see the nakedness. And since the, the uncovering didn't happen, but rather just the seeing happened, um, it's just the, that he saw. And so the audience would, would have known this right away um, and, and would have not, um, not have assumed that there was some kind of sexual act. Um, of course, nakedness is also a euphemism for, for genitalia throughout the Bible. 
So we got that. Okay, Ham had performed homosexual acts on Noah. Uh, this could be under a, a, a cultural understanding, however, but um, the nakedness means genitalia, and the uncovering suggests that sexual intercourse with. However, once again, going back, uh, there is no word in the Old Testament for rape. I've said that before, and I know you've heard me say it again and again. Um, it's always used uh, in context. And most of the times it say, uses things like to uncover the nakedness or to um, lie with or to know is another one. These are euphemisms for sexual intercourse. Um, however, those are always used in the context of rape when you can definitely note that there's a, a situation where rape has occurred, um, they'll still use the same uh, euphemisms. However, the euphemism for sexual intercourse is not used here to uncover, um, but rather he just saw. I, I, I can't reiterate that enough on this. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So the, another one of the, the, the suggestions is that Ham performed homosexual acts on Noah. Um, again, uh, if it's a sexual meaning to this passage is correct, it would it would be a case of rape and not of uh, actual. Uh, homosexual intercourse, because if Noah woke up, that means he must have been passed out at the time. And guess what, people? Uh, un unconsented sexual acts is rape. Uh, doesn't matter if you're drunk or whatever. It's sex without consent is not sex, it's rape. Good deal? Understand? Okay. Okay, and finally, Ham had performed homosexual acts on Noah. Um, if this were the case, the euthanism would have used uh, what Ham did to him was a homosexual act. This kind of euphemism and rethinking of the narrative could lead us to re-examining the relationship between David and Nathan, or Jonathan, as well. Um, because a lot of the euphemisms used in that relationship um, are intimate um, suggestions. But a lot of times people don't want to go there because they just want to point out that homosexuality is wrong and God hates it. But you have to twist the scriptures to get that. Ham performed a sexual act on Noah's wife. Okay, this is the, the other one, the idea there, that um, when, when Ham was, um, when uh, Noah was passed out, that Ham seduced his mother. Okay, again, um, there's nothing in the text to say it. Um, and then the, the question is, why is, why is uh, Noah cursing Canaan and, and not Ham? Um, unless the fact that uh, Canaan is the result of, of uh, the union between uh, Ham and his mother, which is, wow, you read between the lines a lot there. Um, I think your Bible would have a heck of a lot of uh, side notes um, if, you, uh, if you come up with this conclusion. Because it's not there. It's not there. It's reading in way too much into what's, what's not there. And what is, is there makes perfect sense. Okay, and then the next one is that Canaan performed a sexual act on Ham. And this one is like, 
again, what, why, why are we even um, suggesting this? How does Ham seeing his father's nakedness and the curse of Canaan, all of a sudden Canaan's brought into this, and so Canaan is like, is like the, the main character. When he's not the main character, he's just the result of the curse. Once again, go back to the first one where it's plain and simple. A son sees a father naked instead of doing the right thing and covering him up. He runs and tells everyone, his brothers, that's all that was there anymore. And they do the right thing. So when the father wakes up, he curses. Well, let's see how you like it. I'm going to curse your son because you're a curse to me. Now that makes so much more sense than trying to drag in that now uh, Canaan had a sexual, uh, homosexual uh, encounter with his father Ham. And that's why Ham uh, didn't get cursed, but, but Canaan had it. It, it, it's, it's bringing too much outside what is being said into the story, and it's not there. So I, I can't agree with this one at all. And then, again, Canaan performed a sexual act on Ham's wife. Um, it's just taking the idea that, that Ham seduced his mother and since Canaan is the one cursed, they had to switch it around, and then Canaan uh, seduces his mother, which is Ham's wife. Which, what does that have to do? What does that have to do with the, with the, the scripture there? Um, but what we do, well, interesting, um, it is widely accepted that among scholars that the curse was not the blackening of a skin. You got that? as so many pro-slavery and racists want to say. I, I know I said that, but th that's what they use this for. And that's the kind of people that, that use this, usually uh, uh, pro-slavery, racist propagandists, um, would suggest that this gave Cain the mark on his skin and turned him uh, black so that we would know who could be, who could be slaves and who couldn't. Um, once again, really twisting the word. Any questions before I write, write, do conclusion? No questions? No for the PDA hour? Um, so, um, whether you believe that this um, is a case of he he uh, homosexual act being performed on Noah by Ham, or whether it was an act of incest between Noah's wife and Ham, of one of the other suggestions for interpreting this passage, the point is clear. There was no homosexual relationship uh, in this story. Even if we say that, that Ham had performed a homosexual act on Noah, that wasn't a homosexual act. That would be rape. Okay, so at the most, if you want to say that there was a sexual act here, the sexual act was not a sexual act, it was rape. Okay, but there wasn't. It clearly states that Ham saw his father's nakedness, and instead of doing the right thing and covering his father's shame, he announced it. And therefore, his father, Noah, put a curse upon him. Actually, the curse fell upon his son. Kind of like when you're a grandparent, you will kind of do that to your children. You say, wait until your kids grow up, and I hope they treat you like the, you treated me. So we can understand this passage in that side. So this is not a good proof test. This is not even talk about homosexuality. To do so would be to um, really twist or add to the word um, that is there. Any questions? And when we add to something, 
It's usually because we have our own biases and we want to put out some hate towards other people. Please, if you have any questions, um, feel free to uh, email them to the pastor at baithfamilychurch.com. Uh, uh, um, I will answer every and all uh, emails that I get on this subject. Um, and uh, next week we'll be talking about um, Sodom and Gomorrah, everybody's favorite uh, passage that shows God hates homosexuals. God doesn't hate homosexuals. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.